Welcome back to my channel for another episode. In this video, I will explain the meaning of the constant a in Taylor series of a function. If this is what you're looking for, stay tuned. To support my channel, you know what to do. To explain the constant a in Taylor series of a function, I have to start with the definition of Taylor series of a function. Consider that we have a function fx. The Taylor series of a function fx is an infinite sum of terms having the coefficient cn multiplied by x minus a power of n. cn is a coefficient related to derivatives of fx at a point x equal to n and correction factor factorial of n as shown here. To visually explain this math concept, I can use sine x as an example with a equal to 0 and a equal to pi over 2. For the Taylor series of a function, the function fx must be continuous and infinitely differentiable, and sine x meets this criteria. In this plot, sine x is shown between minus 2 pi and 2 pi, and then I will show you the difference between the Taylor series at a equal to 0 and a equal to pi over 2 to explain the meaning of a. Let's talk about the a equal to 0 first. a equal to 0 means that we plan to expand the Taylor series at x equal to 0. We can start with the determining c0. So based on the formula above, so we have a f 0th order at x equal to 0 and factorial of 0 f 0's derivative is sine x itself, so we are dealing with a sine a divided by factorial of 0, which is 1. So this is same as sine 0, or 0. So essentially, c not equal to 0. Based on the formula above, we need to deal with a prime at x equal to a divided by factorial of 1. So this is same as cosine at x equal to a divided by 1, which is same as 1. So equation above, since a equal to 0, essentially we have 0 plus x. In fact, the Taylor series of a function requires the infinite terms like this, but we can simply start plotting the only first few terms on the right hand side to see what happens. For plotting, I will use GNE octave. To plot sine x and the Taylor series in the same figure window, I already prepare for the script for you. If this is the first time to see the script for plotting, you may want to watch my other tutorial video for plotting in GNE octave given description down below. I will skip the line by line explanation of this script at the moment, otherwise the video will be very long. Perhaps I will make another tutorial video to plot the Taylor series. Basically up to line 11, I will plot sine x between minus 2 pi and 2 pi as a reference with a customized label and ticks and font size. When you run this script, I can see nice sine curve. For line number 4, I added for a video recording so you don't have to worry about this, so you can simply ignore this. Now I'm trying to compare the first term of the sine x for the Taylor series. So first term is basically x, so I'm going to come up with a new variable called y underscore Taylor. So this is same as x, so now I'm going to add x comma y Taylor followed by color code red and line width of 2. And you run it again, you can see y equal to x, which is not too bad, nearby x equal to 0, which is a. Let's continue to determine c2 on math part. c2 is a second derivative of sine x at a equal to 0 divided by factorial of 2. Second derivative of fx is minus sine x, x equal to a, divided by 2. 
since a equal to 0, essentially we have 0. So basically c2 equal to 0. For c3, we have triple derivative of fx at x equal to a divided by factorial of 3. So triple derivative of fx is minus cosine a divided by factorial of 3. Since a equal to 0, so we have minus 1 over factorial of 3. So first term equal to 0, second term will be x, and next term will be 0, and fourth term will be 1 over factorial of 3 multiplied by x power of 3. Similarly, your c4 becomes 0, and c5 will be 1 over factorial of 5, followed by x power of 5, and so on. So you can continue when you have time. So overall, your Taylor series of fx at a equal to 0 becomes x minus x cubed over factorial of 3 plus x power of 5 over factorial of 5 minus x power of 7 over factorial of 7 and so on. So in GNU Octave, I will continue to add additional term to see what happened in plot. So next term will be minus x power of 3 divided by factorial of 3, which is equivalent to 6. So when I rerun this, your red curve is going to be approximated nicely and expanded towards a little bit higher x and then lower x as well center around a point, which is 0. So next term will be, we can add x power of 5 divided by factorial of 5, which is 120. So when you rerun this again, you can see your Taylor series expanded one is going to be further approximated towards your exact function sine x. Additional term will be x power of 7 divided by factorial of 7 you can use built-in function factorial followed by 7. When you rerun, you can see the Taylor expanded curve is going to be getting closer to the true function sine x. You can continue to add the term inferently if you have time and willing to put some effort, but the point that I want to make is Taylor expansion is going to be really good around x equal to 0 since you wanted to expand around a equal to 0. What if we have the different a? For example, if you have a equal to pi over 2. We'll see how the different a will change the math expression and graph. Let's talk about the math again. So first step is to determine c0. Based on the formula, c0 equals zeros order at x equal to a divided by factorial of 0. This is equal to function itself, which is sine a divided by 1. This gives you sine pi over 2. So sine pi over 2 equals 1. So now c0 equals 1. For c1, we need to take care of first derivative of f at x equal to a divided by factorial of 1. So this becomes cosine pi over 2 divided by 1, this gives you 0. So essentially, c0 equal to 0. For c2, we need to take care of second derivative of x at x equal to a divided by factorial of 2. This is equivalent to minus sine a divided by factorial of 2, which is equal to minus sine pi over 2 divided by factorial of 2, which is minus 1 over factorial of 2. For C3, we need to take care of triple derivative at x equal to a divided by factorial of 3. This becomes minus cosine a divided by factorial of 3. Since we have a equal to pi over 2, we need to calculate minus cosine pi over 2 divided by factorial of 3, 
So cosine pi over 2 is 0. Now C3 it becomes 0. Similarly, C4 should be fourth derivative of x at x equal to a divided by factorial of 4. This should be equal to sine at x equal to a divided by factorial of 4. Since we have a equal to pi over 2, so we need to calculate sine at pi over 2 divided by factorial of 4 so that we have 1 over factorial of 4. Since we have c1 equal to 1, so fx becomes 1 and c1 basically 0, so the second term will be 0. c2 is minus 1 over factorial over 2, so we have 1 over factorial over 2, followed by x minus a, which is pi over 2, power of 2. So c3, again, we have 0, and c4 is 1 over factorial of 4, multiplied by x minus a, which is pi over 2, power of 4. So we can continue to add. So essentially, in Taylor expansion, we can come up with fx equal to 1 minus 1 over factor of 2, multiplied by x minus pi over 2, square, plus 1 over factor of 4, x minus pi over 2, power of 4. And we can continue. To compare with the exact function sine x, I will start plotting sine x again. Now to include Taylor series expansion to the same figure, I will start defining a few variables, which is parameter a, pi over 2. I'm going to introduce y underscore Taylor for the Taylor expansion curve. The first term is a 1. So I'm going to use a built-in function once, followed by length of the vector, which is 1, length of x. So essentially, length of x is going to be determined by linear space. Default vector length is 100. So now I'm going to add x, y, Taylor with the red color and line width equal to 2. So when you rerun this script, you can see y equal to 1 to approximate it a equal to pi over 2. So the second term is going to be minus 1 over 2 times x minus a, which is pi over 2, followed by squared. So when you read on this script, you can see straight curve is going to be curved out, approximate towards sine x, nearby a equal to pi over 2. To further elaborate it, you can also add third term, which is 1 over factorial of 4, followed by x minus a, which is pi over 2, power of 4. As you can see, you have a better result. Again, nearby a equal to pi over 2. If you want, you can also further expand it by adding 1 over factorial of 6, multiplied by x minus a, power of 6. As you can see, the curve is going to be getting better towards uh, sine x. Again, a equal to pi over 2. Thanks for watching this video until the end. And please subscribe my channel if you want to continue to watch tutorial videos in science, technology, engineering, and math. Please give thumbs up if you enjoyed. Please feel free to share your thoughts in comment section down below. See you next time.